page 72, chord etude. You get a lot of these chord etudes in this book. That's fine. It just gives you a little practice of playing a particular chord or two. On this page, they're talking about the D7 chord. It's also known as other things. We'll get there. We've been in the key of G major. And one sharp. All the F's are sharp. Okay. And we've covered the G chord. And it's like the first couple measures there in the chord A2. It's a G chord. Here, I do it in both hands. That's fine. You already know a G chord has other names. It could be called a one chord because it's built on the first step of the G major scale. This is a one chord or an I chord. Right. It's also called a tonic chord because that's the name of the step. Every step in a scale has names. Well, with the D7, first let's start with a D and then we'll add the seventh. And we're in G major. And we go one, two, three, four, five. And we build a chord on the fifth step. We get a D chord. Call a five chord in the key of G because it's about on the fifth step. And the fifth step is also called dominant. So this is a dominant chord in the key of G. But it's always a D7 chord. It doesn't matter what the key is. We add the seventh step. Seven above here is here. So it's C natural. Now there have been questions on this because we're actually using what's known as a minor seventh. See, we have different flavors of intervals. We haven't got into them. The book hasn't gone into them. I've tried to avoid them, but you may be asking. Because it, when you talk about the key of D major, D major, we'll get there eventually, has two sharps, so an F and a C sharp. So it would be here for D major. That would be the D7 chord. However, the way mu we do music is we take that seventh step and we take it down a half step. So it's here. We're using that instead. And this is known as the D7 chord. If you want that, it's called a D major 7th, because it uses the major 7th. It'll make more sense later on. Just right now, we're in the key of G major. Stay within G major, and that means it's a C, sharp, a C natural. Here. The four notes. And generally, we don't use this arrangement. We have we want the F sharp on the bottom, so we take the D and put it on top. And we don't need all the notes. We only want three of them right now. So we get rid of the A, and you end up with that. So you hear to hear to hear. Both hands. Or follow the pattern. You take the one chord, and then you take the bottom note down a half step. And you use the top two notes in the hand position. Remember C major, we did that? G to the G7. We'll just take a half step down and we'll use the top two notes in the hand position. Same thing. You can do that with any key. Use this pattern on any key, you'll get the 5 7 chord of the key. I just need you to understand a little more about it. So where did it come from? How did we get a 5-7? And what's the 7 all about? And all that junk. You'll learn to recognize these in the music. And it makes reading music a lot easier because you're just looking at one thing rather than a bunch of notes. You just, oh, it's a chord. I recognize it. I play it as a chord. Now let's talk chord A2. It's no big deal on this once you got the chords down. It's two lines long with a repeat sign, so it's four lines long. Treble and bass clef, one sharp, or in the key of G major. Make sure you can do the G major scale, blah, blah, blah. You know all about that. Uh, for three, four times, so it's only three counts. And we just got quarter notes and dotted half notes, so we should be good to go, I hope. I'll take both hands together because that's sort of, that works out. You're just playing chords. Broken chord and then a block chord. You want to get to where you can play this without looking at the keyboard too, where you can make this change with a half, you know, a half step change or one key different without looking. Dynamic, well, it's really, it, it says MF, you should practice this softly and in the middle and loud. You really ought to try this. It's how much weight am I using? If I play it really soft, I'm using very little weight. and very light. Very little weight. If I play it loud, I'm using, a, I'm having a lot of weight. And claps the wrist. Now keep the wrist flexible. Don't play with a stiff wrist. Uh -uh. As far as the speed goes, again, it's up to you. It's 
not fast or slow, it's in the middle. So just make it accurate. These quarter notes are all even, even, bum, 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 keep the beat even. Okay. since it's repeated is you can change the dynamic. See when we repeat things we'll play it more than once it's nice to change something so it's not played again exactly the same. Ugh. And usually what you do the most common thing to do would be to play it the second time softer than the first. But I'll leave that up to you that's interpretation. Also if you're having a problem in the right hand on this D7 chord up here you don't want to be up here then you can stretch out and finger it too. You can finger it that way too. It's another fingering for it. And there are times in music where you'll need to finger it this way, regardless of how big your hands are. The idea is if you can reach an octave, D to D here, then you can reach that. So, yeah, you should be able to do that. But this fingering is good too, if you can do it. I forgot to talk about the articulation. The, really, it's just slurs. Just slur them as best you can. You can't connect because of the repeated note, but you get as close as you can. And then lift up between them, like taking a breath, lift up, lift up. So just lift up on those, and the chords at the bottom, the last four measures, here, connect them as best you can. And you notice in the last two measures, you have all these curved lines going. Well, that's because they're tied, and every note in the chord has to have its own line because we don't always tie all the notes in a chord. Sometimes we just tie some, or one, or whatever. So that's why the, you have to have six curved lines there, because we have six notes. Let's play this together slowly and double check the notes and the rhythms. Now give us three counts, and we will repeat it. One, ready, go. Three, two, three, two, three, tie, two, three, 